Now read this. Hello and welcome back to Now Read This, Lloyd Alexander's The Chronicles of Bredain, Book 2, The Black Cauldron, Chapter 18, The Loss. It was night when Terran came to his senses. He found himself propped against a log, a cloak wrapped around him. His head throbbed, his body ached. Ailonwi was bending over him anxiously. Terran blinked his eyes and tried to sit up. For some moments his memory held only a mingling of sights and sounds, of rushing water, a stone, a shout, his head still whirled. A yellow light shone in his eyes. He realised, as his mind gradually cleared, that the girl had lit the golden sphere and had set it on the log. Beside him a small fire blazed. Crouched next to it, the bard and Gurgi fed twigs to the flames. "'I'm glad you decided to wake up.' Ilonwi said, trying to appear cheerful, as Fluda and Gurgi came to kneel beside Terran. You swallowed so much with the river, we were afraid we'd never be able to pump it out of you, and that wrap on your head didn't help matters. The crocken! Terran gasped. Elidia! He looked around him. This fire! He murmured. We dare not show a light. Aron's warriors. It was either build a fire or let you freeze to death, said the bard. So, of course, we decided on the first. At this point, he added with a wry grin, I doubt it can make too much of a difference. Since the cauldron is out of our hands, I don't believe Aron will have quite the same interest in us. Happily, I might say. Where is the crocken? Terran asked. Despite his spinning head, he raised himself from the log. It is with Ella, dear, said Ilonwi. And if you ask where he is, put in the bard, we can answer you very quickly. We do not know. Wicked prince goes off with wicked pot, Gurgi added. Yes, yes, with ridings and stridings. Good riddance to them, agreed Fluda. I don't know which is worse, the crocken or Elidir. Now at least they're both together. You let him go? Terran cried in alarm. He put his hands to his head. You let him steal the crocken? Let is hardly the word, my friend, the bard answered ruefully. You seem to have forgotten, Ilonwi added. Elidir was trying to kill you. It's a good thing you fell into the river because I can tell you the goings-on weren't very pleasant on the shore. It was terrible, as a matter of fact, the girl went on. We'd all started after Elidir. By that time you were already floating down the river like a twig, in a, well, like a twig in a river. We tried to save you, but Elidir turned on us. I'm certain he meant to kill us, Ilonwi said. You should have seen his face and his eyes. He was furious. Worse than that, Fluder tried to stand against him. That villain has the strength of ten, said the bard. I could barely draw my sword. It's clumsy when you have a broken arm, you understand. But I faced him, a dreadful clash of arms. You've never seen the prowess of an outraged flam. Another moment, and I should have had him at my mercy. In a manner of speaking, the bard added quickly. He knocked me sprawling. And Gurgi fought too. Yes, yes, with smitings and bitings. Poor Gurgi, said Ilonwi. He did his best, but Elidir picked him up and tossed him against a tree. When I tried to draw my bow, he snatched it away and snapped it in his hands. He chased us into the woods after that, Fluda said. I've never seen a man in such a frenzy, shouting at the top of his voice, calling us robbers and oath-breakers, and that we were trying to keep him in second place. That's all he's able to say or think now if you choose to call that thinking. Terran shook his head sadly. I fear the black beast has swallowed him up as a day and warmed, he said. I pity Elidir from the bottom of my heart. I should pity him more, muttered Fluda, if he hadn't tried to slice off my head. For long I hated him, Terran said, but in the little while I bore a day and's brooch, I believe I saw him more clearly. His heart is unhappy and tormented. Nor shall I forget what he said to me, that I taunted him for seeking glory, yet clung to it myself. Terran spread his arms in front of him. With dirty hands, he said heavily. Pay no heed to what Elidir says, Ilonwi cried. After what he made us do, he has no right to blame anyone for anything. And yet, Terran said softly, almost to himself, he spoke the truth. Did he? said Ilonwi. It was only too true. For his own honour he would have slain us all. 
We managed to escape from him, Fluda continued. That is, he finally stopped pursuing us. When we came back, the horses, the crocken, and Elidir were gone. After that, we followed down the river looking for you. We hadn't gone far, but I'm still amazed that anyone can swallow so much water in such a short distance. We must find him, Terran cried. We dare not let him keep the crocken. You should have left me and gone after him. He tried to climb to his feet. Come now, there is no time to lose. Fluda shook his head. I'm afraid there's no use in it, as our friend Gwistle might say. There's not a sign of him anywhere. We have no idea where he planned to go or what he had in mind to do. He has too long a start on us, and though I hate to admit it, I don't believe any one of us or all of us together could do very much against him. The bard glanced at his broken arm. We are hardly in the best way to deal with the Crocken or Elidir, even if we found them. Taryn stared silently into the fire. You too speak the truth, my friend, he said with great gloom. You have all done more than I could ever ask. Alas, much better than I. Yes, it would be useless now to seek Elidir, as useless as our quest has been. We have forfeited all for nothing. A Dane's brooch, our honour, and now the crocken itself. We shall return to Caer Dalban empty-handed. Perhaps Elidir was right, he murmured. It is not fitting for a pig-boy to seek the same honour as a prince. Pig-boy? Ilonmi cried indignantly. Don't ever speak of yourself that way, Terran of Cardalban. No matter what has happened, you're not a pig boy. You're an assistant pig keeper. That's honour in itself. Not that they don't mean the same thing when you come right down to it, she said. But one is proud and the other isn't. Since you have a choice, take the proud one. Terran said nothing for a time, then raised his head to Ilonmi. A Dayan once told me there is more honour in a field well ploughed than in a field steeped in blood. As he spoke, his heart seemed to lighten. I see now that what he said was true above all. I do not begrudge Elidir his prize. I too shall seek honour, but I shall seek it where I know it will be found. The companions passed the night in the forest, and next morning turned southward across gentler land. They saw neither huntsmen nor Gwythanes, and they made little attempt at concealment, for, as the bard had said, the forces of Oron sought the crocken, and not a pitiful band of stragglers. Unburdened, they moved more easily, though without Luego and Merinlas, their pace on foot was slow and painful. Terran trudged silently, his head bowed against the bitter wind. Dead leaves drove against his face, but he paid them no heed, filled as he was with the distress of his own thoughts. Some while after midday, Terran caught sight of movement among the trees covering a hill crest. Foreseeing danger, he urged the companions to hurry across the open meadow and find cover in a thicket. But before they could reach it, a party of horsemen appeared at the rise and galloped toward them. Terran and the bard drew their swords. Gurgi knocked an arrow into his bowstring, and the weary band made ready to defend themselves as best they could. Fluda suddenly gave a great shout, and waved his sword excitedly. "'Put up your weapons!' he cried. "'We're safe at last! Those are Morgant's warriors! They bear the colours of the House of Madoc. The warriors pounded closer. Taran, too, cried out with relief. They were indeed King Morgant's riders, and at their head rode King Morgant himself. As they reined up beside the companions, Taran hurried to Morgant's steed and dropped to one knee. "'Well met, sire!' he cried. We feared your men were servants of Oron. King Morgant swung down from the saddle. His black cloak was torn and travel-stained, his face haggard and grim, but his eyes still held the fierce pride of a hawk. A trace of a smile flickered on his lips. But you would have stood against us nonetheless, he said, raising Terran to his feet. What of Prince Gwydion, of Cole? Terran asked quickly and with sudden uneasiness. We were separated at Darkgate, and we have had no word of them. A day and alas is slain, and Doli too, I fear. Of the dwarf there is no trace, answered Morgant. Lord Gwydion and Cole, son of Cole Fru, are safe. They seek you even now, though, Morgant added with another half-smile, it has been my good fortune to find you. The huntsmen of Anuvin pressed us sharply at Darkgate. 
Morgant went on. At last we fought free of them and began to make our way toward Caer Cadan, where Lord Gwydion hoped you would rejoin us. We had not reached there, said Morgant, before we had word of you, and that you had taken it on yourself to go to the marshes of Morva. That was a bold venture, Terran of Cadalban, Morgant added, as bold, perhaps, as it was ill-advised. You should learn that a warrior owes obedience to his lord. It did not seem we could do otherwise, Terran protested. We had to find the crocken before Aron. Would you have not done the same? Morgant nodded curtly. I do not reproach your spirit, but I would have you understand that Lord Gwydion himself would hesitate to make a decision of such weight. We would have known nothing of your movements had not Gwistel of the Fair Folk brought us news. Lord Gwydion and I separated then to search for you. Gwistel? Ilonwy interrupted. Not Gwistel? Why, he wouldn't have done the least thing for us until Dolly threatened to squeeze him. Gwistel? All he wanted was to be left alone and hide in his wretched burrow. Morgant turned to her. You speak without knowledge, princess. Among all who hold the wayposts, Gwistel of the Fair Folk is the shrewdest and bravest. Did you believe King Idelig would trust a lesser servant so close to Anuvin? But, he added, if you misjudged him, it was his intention that you do so. As for the crocken itself, Morgant went on, as Terran looked at him in amazement, though you failed to bring it from Morva, Prince Elidir has done us noble service. Yes, Morgant added quickly, my warriors came upon him near the river Tevin in the course of our search. From his words I understood that you were drowned and your companions scattered, and that he bore the cauldron from Morva. But that's not true, Ilonwy began, her eyes flashing angrily. Be silent, Terran cried. No, I will not be silent, retorted Ilonwy, spinning around to face Terran. You aren't going to tell me you still think you're bound by that oath you made us all swear. What does she mean? Morgant asked. His eyes narrowed, and he studied Terran closely. I'll tell you what I mean, Ilonwy answered, heedless of Terran's protest. It's very simple. Terran paid for it, and paid dearly. We carried it almost on our backs every step of the way from Morva until Elidir came along. He helped us. He certainly did that, just the way a robber helps you tidy up your chamber. That's the truth of it, and I don't care what anybody else says. Does she indeed speak the truth? Morgant asked. When Terran did not answer, Morgant nodded slowly and continued in a thoughtful tone. I believe she does, though you stay silent. There was much of Prince Elidir's tale which rang false to me. As I once told you, Terran of Cadalban, I am a warrior, and I know my men. But when you face Elidir himself, I shall know beyond all doubt. Come, said Morgant, helping Terran to his steed. We shall ride to my camp. Your task is ended. The crocken is in my hands. Morgant's warriors took up the rest of the companions, and they galloped swiftly into the wood. The warlord had made camp in a wide clearing, well protected by trees, its approach guarded by a deep ravine, and the tents had been blended in with a line of underbrush. Terran saw Luego and Melanlas tethered among the steeds of the warriors. A little apart, Islamak pawed the ground nervously and pulled at her halter. Near the centre of the clearing, Terran caught his breath at the sight of the black crocken, which now had been removed from its sling. Though two of Morgant's warriors stood by it with drawn swords, Terran could not shake off the sense of fear and foreboding that hung like a dark mist about the cauldron. Do you not fear Aron will attack you here and gain the cauldron once again? Terran whispered. Morgant's eyes hooded over, and he gave Terran a glance of both anger and pride. Whoever challenges me shall be met, he said coldly, be it the lord of Anuvin himself. A warrior drew aside the curtain of one of the pavilions, and the warlord led them inside. There, bound hand and foot, lay the still form of Elidir. His face was covered with blood, and he appeared so grievously battered that Ilonwy could not stifle a cry of pity. How is this? Terran exclaimed, turning to Morgant in shock and reproach. Sire, he added quickly, your warriors had no right to use him so ill. This is shameful and dishonourable treatment. 
Do you question my conduct? Morgant replied. You have much to learn of obedience. My warriors heed my orders, and so shall you. Prince Elidir dared to resist me. I caution you not to follow his example. At a call from Morgant, armed guards strode quickly into the tent. The war leader made a brief gesture toward Taran and his companions. Disarm them and bind them fast. Hey, you want to buy something? You can check the description for my books and audiobooks. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe for more content.